All right, tell your story. Is it about how you <laughs> could navigate a train in an English speaking country or <laughs> No, man. Uh, that's a nasty thing to say. Right <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, right before we started, I said, hey, thanks for doing it late. And he said, no problem. We understand that you're an uh, international traveler. But yeah, uh, a fucking tradesman from the uh, nipple of Australia couldn't manage trains. So yeah, sorry. The tour manager I have is an insane man named Richo, who's very fun. But uh, they just don't stop talking here. That's their whole thing. They just fill every sentence that you wanted to say with their own words, which I'm not complaining because they're interesting. They're great storytellers. I think that when they conquer the aboriginals here, they uh, absorbed the, the storytelling nature of that culture because they didn't have a written language. You know, they just would, you know, they would like tap it out on a turtle's back and that would echo across the Harbor. And then they would know that it was Christmas or whatever. But, uh, <laughs> so yeah, we're about an hour behind here. Uh, we were in Newcastle last night, which is a quiet seaside community. Uh, very nice, very laid back after the uh, the insanity that is Sydney, the London of the South Seas. And uh, I go on stage at the Newcastle Comedy Club, packed to the gills. Shout out to this this little boy who owns a comedy club in Newcastle, Australia. His name's Elliot. I swear to God, he's 16 years old. He looks like Matt Reif if he was shrunk down. He looks like Dayton Vissette, actually, just currently you know <laughs> yeah, a little, a little db yeah a little australian db so anyway i go on stage and it's all packed but the front row is empty there's eight seats in the front row they're unoccupied um because i think people were hesitant to sit up front for the american wild man who's going to come and you know lambast them or whatever so as i'm wont to do in these situations I get into it, I, you know, I call Elliot a, you know, a progeria baby, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then I remark about the front row. I say, wow, what happens up here? It looks like we're mourning a bus disaster. Huh. Audible cries of grief and shock. Shit. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yes. Yes way, my bald friend. All right. <laughs> yes way, Andrew Jackson's uh, secret lover. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I'm like, oh, what? Uh, wait, sorry, guys, I don't mean to joke about stuff, you know, but if they would have, it looks like we're mourning them, you know, they always sat up front in the bus, and if they didn't on that fateful day, they would have been <laughs> beheaded. They wouldn't have been beheaded. They would have had their heads still attached or whatever. The thing I've said for years now, when there's no one in the front row, a lady gets up weeping, <laughs> runs out of the room. Her boyfriend follows. So I navigate, you know, I don't know what's going on. But if there is a bus disaster, I'm not going to ask questions and apologize for it. You know, I just got to persevere. So I do my hour. And as I'm walking off stage, people are entertained. All the comics go, that was great shit about the bus disaster, mate. I can't <laughs> believe you went on the bus disaster your first right away. That was that was ballsy. That was brass. And I'm like, wait, there was a bus disaster? <laughs> so then I'm standing at the merch table and 80 people stopped by to tell me how the bus disaster uh, affected them, all the people they know who died in the bus disaster, how some of them were supposed to be on the bus that fateful day. Uh, so here's what happened. <laughs> Less than 30 days previous to my show last night in Newcastle, <laughs> this, this is the headline. Dream wedding day turns to tragedy. <laughs> What? Bus driver charged with dangerous driving, occasioning death after 10 or more killed in a horror Hunter Valley wedding bus crash. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. These people were leaving a wedding on a party bus and the driver was wasted and he flipped it and... At least 10 people died. They don't know because so many, there was just a tangle of heads and limbs when they recovered the vehicle. There wasn't like a ledger stating how many people were on there, but they pieced it together and at least 10 people died. They keep, they keep stressing this at least. So the girl who ran out, her boyfriend who stayed, which was cool. That was nice of him. <laughs> <laughs> he wrote it out. He said that, uh, 
her stepsister was on the bus and that this was the first time she'd been out of the house for a wee laugh oh, since boy. the tragedy. And within five minutes on being on stage, I just start riffing on bus disasters. And the comics are like, that was so brave. It's like, if I knew there was a bus disaster, A, wouldn't have opened with it. Wouldn't have just started off with the bus disaster stuff. Probably would have put it in the middle somewhere if I were to touch on it. And if I knew that it was the literally the worst disaster to afflict Newcastle, this sleepy fucking community in the last 10 years, probably wouldn't have touched on the bus disaster at all. So yeah. just want to apologize <laughs> to the seven people who came to the show who are Chubby Behemoth guys. I didn't know about the bus disaster. My bad. Mia culpa. I'm so <sighs> sorry that you guys were just destroyed by someone was like it was our 9-11 mate nothing not much goes on here so <laughs> it was our 9-11 it was our 9-11 yes and that drunk that drunk bus driver was osama bin laden <laughs> 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 uh, peggy, oh, peggy westchester was our <laughs> bin laden yes yeah. that continues the crazy Tawny Middlebrook. All these Australian names are fucked. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. I was close. Uh, so, we go, Nads. I know he's, about he's the it. Prime I, Minister. I should have. I should have told you. Uh, mm. No, that continues your like eerie trend where you will. There's like three couples where you've looked at them and been like, "Oh, look who just buried their kid," and sure enough, they were <laughs> like barely hanging on. Because of a, a dead <laughs> child. <laughs> what happened? Did a train plow through an elementary school? And they're like, yes. 42, 42 days ago. <laughs> Everything that you say comes to life. <laughs> if you hadn't said anything, then there wouldn't have been a crash. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was retconned in yeah. afterwards. <laughs> yeah, you're in the fucking uh, twilight zone. Well, Emily immediately was like, yeah, I know, and you're going to say that, oh, you, you're a soothsayer. You can read people like a book. They, I know you think you're magic, but you said that bus disaster thing so many times. It was bound to happen. And look <laughs> at you now. So don't start patting yourself on the back because you're not from 10 minutes in the future and everyone's <laughs> catching up to you. I was like trying to explain to her because she just like she didn't go to the show. She's not going to go watch the show. So she went and fucking sat by the water and read her book. And then I came over in between shows and was like, listen to this. And she was like, and why are you surprised? Of course, there's a bus disaster somewhere in the world. <laughs> she just didn't care. She couldn't have been less empathetic about the whole thing. So, and, then you, and then you were like, oh, yeah, well. Looks like there was a an American who drowned in a in a river after reading a book. She's like, "Don't put that on me." <laughs> Not so confident now, are you, bitch? <laughs> do you want to play with black magic, or do you want to make love to the wizard? Because I'm the white wizard tonight. <laughs> so yeah, like, dude. And then, of was... course, on the second show, I told them about how I riffed on the bus disaster. So then it was okay because I was apologizing, but I just talked about it for ten minutes instead of two uh yeah man fuck it really sucked all the life out of it and it was the first five minutes of the hour you have to do the hour here <laughs> also the show started at 5 30 so they were all like fresh from the ferry you know they were just like done at the wharf learning to tie no more knots i keep calling them the, the fucking drug addled sons of mariners and they're all like yep that's us <laughs> why is there so many ferries isn't it just one island or are there many like I don't, there's like little waterways that you have to navigate, little rivers. Yeah, and people, shit. I'm on the coast. So it's just like instead of, you know, getting stuck in traffic on the, there's not a train that goes up the coast, but a ferry will take them to different inlets oh, and harbors. Okay. Last night I called it a harbor and they were like, it's an inlet. Watch out, watch out with that. And I was like, I don't care. I, I, I'm still reeling from the events of the bus disaster. <laughs> <laughs> on the second show some lady was like i said i had a cock and she was like prove it and i was like this country's <laughs> this country suffered enough <laughs> <laughs> but the comics thought i was like fucking bill hicks like oh you skewer the sacred cows it's like 
that lady's stepsister died in the bus disaster. I also said bus disaster so many times, it quit making sense. <laughs> Lost all meaning. Nobody, nobody else walked out? No, just that one lady. And it was awkward the rest of the hour? You got them, obviously, right? They, I got they, them, yeah. They, they forgave you. <laughs> well, I think they understood that I didn't know there was a bus disaster. Because yeah. as soon as I got off stage, the comics were like, Oh, we're, we're going to build a statue of you. You tell the truth. No one does that down here. It's like ten, at least 10 people died. They, they were literally beheaded. I said the head thing, and that was right on the nose. Much like the steering mm. wheel was for those ten people, because <laughs> their heads were torn off their bodies after it was, the the bride was on there. Whoa. She died. Yeah, her wedding yeah. dress wasn't red anymore, or white anymore. It was red. It was stained with the blood of her whole family. Uh, it was yeah. like she had a jammy figgy pie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's tough. But also, oh yeah, the first thing I thought was, why didn't little twelve year old Timmy Tumnus? tell you about the bust is hey sam so you know the eight seats up front are a bit of a gesture in it <laughs> i go british too <laughs> i can't do it either oi bunch of people you just, you just go up you just go up at the end of the words that's what you do they're bunch always surprised that's how died. oh what's going on my name's richo who knew <laughs> Like they're always answering a question. <laughs> Little Richo. Yeah, he should have smartened you up because... I don't think anyone assumed on. I would walk on stage and right away. <laughs> I know. Bus but... disaster. It's, but that's part of... The calamity of the coast, they call it. Whoa. Yeah, the Newcastle tragedy. Don't 30 people die from getting a, a snake on a spider trapped in their hair? So Not it's... in this part of the country. That's okay. in the middle. Oh. In the middle, people live underground because it's too hot. So they just yeah. build, like, fucking cities underground because they, it's, like, 130 degrees all the time. Good Lord. Not now, though, because yeah. it's winter, huh? Yeah, it's probably 110 there now. <laughs> it's balmy. <laughs> These people, man. You love them. They, I do love them, but uh, I, I'll never figure them out. I mean, the yeah. Japanese, I get it. You know, they're small. They don't speak English. They do whatever <laughs> they want. But here, I understand everything they're doing. Uh, the only time you can talk is when you're on stage. You're mm -hmm. like, all right, just shut up. Are they they said my name three and a half minutes ago. <laughs> I'm supposed to be up there. So maybe wrap it up about how a kangaroo kicked your mom's head off. <laughs> Everybody well, loses like a head down there. Yeah, everyone's headless by 35. And they're necklace by 10 p.m. <laughs> Bunch of Jordan dolls. Yeah. Bunch of Jordos. That's what they would call them. <laughs> yeah, Richo and Jordo. Just yeah. a head rolling. Neck and a pint, having a bit of neck grease. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's, it's like everything they say. And then they also have like, very big robust vocabularies so they describe things in like a really uh direct way but then they just keep talking about the same thing over and over again they're really tough to figure out they're pretty much the black people of white people because they're all much funnier than every other white person in the world you know how black people are funnier than us as a rule yeah australians are all funnier than we are any other whites anywhere I've been told South Africans are even funnier, probably because they are so close to black people. <laughs> they stole that. They, they like that. Shit. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Down by the water. Yeah. You don't, you don't, bears play. You don't do shows in the middle or no? Fuck no. No one does anything in the middle besides like mine opals and eat clay. Oh, okay. They're sucking the minerals out of stones over there because they can't get water. Did you start southwest, and now you're going east and north and up and around? Nah, bruv. I've been in, uh, not nah, Cuzzy. Nah, Bruvis. <laughs> it's like, you know how I talk gibberish? That's just how they talk here. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, I, ha I had a wee nip of the mumble shanks, and then the snakes <laughs> came in, and I was like, oh, it's not me, birthday. It's like, what did you just say to me? <laughs> What's going on here? And that guy's like the poet laureate of New South Wales. It's like, oh, he, he has a medal for his, his wordplay. It's all limericks. <laughs> it's all the people who were like too vulgar to perform in the pubs of like 1770s England. So they shipped them down here. 
and let them bang a couple of koalas and <laughs> they built their own society it's like five-year-olds are running a country it's like oh we made up our own games and everyone has to pretend like they matter we've got our own football we've got our wee cricket we smashed the wicket you're like good for you we only like meat pies and koalas and everything's a question and we talk like wiggity biggity chiggity you're like, jesus christ <laughs> how's this place not on fire all the time <laughs> The Sydney show was fun. It started at 6.30 for some reason. That was cool. Uh, my show last night, 5.30 for some reason. Richo, uh, Richo likes to be able to go out late after the show and really tie one on. Yeah, he likes to smoke ciggies. What does he say? Oh, I'm going to smug a darwi. <laughs> or no, smug, smug a dari. That's dart, which means cigarette, but he yeah. made it dari. They call the afternoon the Arvo, which doesn't make any sense. It's like we just abbreviate everything. Yeah, we'll, we'll get we'll get a uh, we we'll get a coffee in the Arvo, and I'm like, where's the Arvo? Is that a fucking grocery store? And he's like, oh 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 oh. <laughs> but I'm not doing okay, the thing that yeah. every American comic does here, is which is just go on stage and be like, you guys are weird. I address it right away. I'm like, if you guys think I'm just gonna get up here and say you guys talk funny, I'm not doing that. Yeah. And then they're like, have a shoey, you cunt. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> what's a what's a shoey? It's, it's where you drink a beer out of your shoe. <laughs> Have you done that yet? Not yet, no, because I haven't been bombing. But yeah, they, they right away when I walked on stage in Sydney, they're like, shoey, shoey, you cunt. <laughs> That's fun. That's a pretty fun uh, national dance move, the shoey. <laughs> Well, again, it's like they're like a bunch of fucking foster kids, you know? Just, Foster's like, kids. Yeah, Australians for people. Drinking the oil can. Australian for people. Uh, anyway. You, sh you should have done the shoey after you had the bus, <laughs> the, the awkward bus uh, open. You're like, oh, who yeah. wants to do me? Who wants to see me do a shoey? And they're like, yeah, <laughs> he's got him back. I just take, I solemnly remove my shoe and stand at attention. <laughs> Moment of silence for the 10 to 15 who passed. They were just turned into human custard on the highway. Jesus. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been fraught with peril the whole time. <laughs> Often you can hear Emily rolling her eyes. That's good. She's rattling her oculars around up in her bird cage, as they say down here when uh you guys are interacting with other people or what no when people come up and kiss my ass and say how oh, okay. they love the book or they love me they love the pod there was five dudes who said they were becker backers and i was like you don't listen to the pod what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah did you ship a chubby behemoth shirt down here no i don't think so. some no. guy had a chubby behemoth shirt down here at the sydney show so that was Whoa. cool Maybe yeah. he made it. No, it was the gray one with the the Rand Barnaclo drawing on it. Oh, uh, uh, Nicole was handling those for a while, so she must okay. have. Uh, she must have sent it because I never did. Dude, I sold every bit of merch they brought to Sydney for me. I sold every book and poster that we had the first show. It's like <laughs> people are stoked, dude. Well, yeah, not everybody makes the trip, right? No, no one comes down here besides like Arge Barker and Doug Benson. They're still humping the success of the marijuana logs. <laughs> yeah, which is hilarious. I had that CD. And that was literally like 20 years ago. Yeah. I had it in high school. I thought maybe uh, 04. But yeah, long, long ago. Yeah. That was... Uh important to me <laughs> that was that was a very funny uh it was seminal album yeah like, this is it man what do you sure got you there this crisp? no so we had one of these guys we had crispy. more gapu chong or whatever you know the eggs you can't have sex with that you still buy in Japan. <laughs> uh, we bought one at the wharf because they had a they had a mushroom guy it was five different mushroom guys. There was a Noki mushroom, a portobello. And there was one guy who was doing this, like smushing his face up. And I was like, well, that's funny. But instead, the one that I got was the mushroom just pulling them, just 
doing racist Chinese guy. <laughs> He's, <laughs> it's insane. They're selling these down here. It's what are we? What are we doing, uh, y'all? He's pulling his eyelids down from the bottom, which is not a racist thing. I don't know, dude. It looks pretty close to me. <laughs> no, I mean it's not really a move that we do. So I, I, yeah, it might be, it might be making fun of like a brand of kiwi or something. But warning: all our products contain small racist figurines. What's this? So it's like, what are we doing? <laughs> But I like to take him and I like to give him a little bath in the slime. <laughs> you <brought. laughs> oh yeah, I, I was gonna make fun of you for bringing the slime, but you haven't. You had no choice. Yeah, I didn't like fly home first, and then I, you know, yeah, I, was like, oh, I better pack up my go bag. What do I need? My laptop, <laughs> my mom's ashes. No, fuck that. Just the slime. <laughs> Put your mom's ashes in the slime. No. No, dude. <laughs> I can't desecrate me mummy's dust. Don't deso the dust. Your two favorite things, your mommy and slime, together. Yeah, and making a mess. <laughs> uh, what was I going to so say? Anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. it was funny that you texted us, wrote us, probably wondering, I wonder when these guys will see it. And we both immediately reply, even though it's five in the morning, because of our fucked up sleep schedule. <laughs> so yeah, I messaged you guys last <laughs> night at ten p.m. my time, <laughs> and you guys are both awake. So I was on. What's going on? I was on the toilet. Of course, I have had uh, just the weirdest. Diarrhea. No, the weirdest sleep schedule because I am like waking up early. And then hanging out until like 4 p.m. And then sleeping until 8 or 9, maybe 10. And then like dicking around for three hours. And then sleeping again for like three hours. And waking up at 7. It's fucked. <sighs> but it's fair. also not like it doesn't matter. Because I just have to like do this until uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. I have to bartend. But even like Wednesday when I worked. I was like, oh, I'm not going to get my 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. nap, but it, it was fine. And I thought, oh, I've broken the cycle. And then I went right back to it <laughs> Thursday, <laughs> Friday, and today. So, uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it's going to take for it to uh, stop. But here we are. Maybe just forcing yourself to stay awake. Yeah, that's the worst. That sucks. <laughs> that's like a solution, though. You're like, I don't know the... The answer to this riddle that is time. It's like, well, just don't go to bed. You'll be okay. It's hard not to when you're very tired. And then I'm, what, I'm a prick. I have to, like, stand up like a horse. Yeah, exactly. You're standing up right now. I know. Thank God. The only time you're not standing up is when you're on the <laughs> toilet for four hours a day. Maybe just don't use the toilet and you won't be so sleepy. <laughs> no, that's not going to help either. But slime is weeping. Yeah, that's... It's just some of the worst slime I've ever handled. Did you use it as an egg? No, I have my wife here. She's my egg. <laughs> you had a day without her. By the way, <laughs> restless egg syndrome. Time to retire that one, huh? <laughs> I don't know. Jesus. You tell us. Is it well, dying? I don't know. Last night after the bus debacle, I was like, I know it'll save this. I'm having a tough time <laughs> sleeping. No, didn't bring him back. <laughs> <laughs> Some guy last night was like, I don't get it. I was like, well, it's not. there's not much to get. Don't fucking beautiful mind this thing. <laughs> it kind of rhymes with restless egg in restless leg. That's the whole thing, all right? And he was like, oh. And I was like, oh, you guys are just stupid. That's all. <laughs> You're in this fucking boy king's place. Also, they call bikers bikies. Like, they call outlaw bikers bikies here, which is so funny to me. Like, this kid told me a story about his brother's in prison for life because he blasted a cop in the chest with a shotgun. And I was like, whoa, why? And he's like, he's a bikey. And it's like, put some respect on his name. <laughs> <laughs> bikey sounds like he rode a tricycle to the ice cream stand. Like, oh, look at the wee bikies. <laughs> yeah. Doing a lap before school starts. No, he's this kid's brother has a fucking full swat tatted on his throat. And he still calls him a bikey. Shout out, Zane. Good kid. Right now? Yeah, it's time. Sure, it's, all right. It's, it's slime time. All right. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Life can feel totally overwhelming. Maybe things are stressful at school or work. Maybe you can't find your slime. 
and you can't make fart noises whenever you have to break bad news to the neighbors. <laughs> Maybe you're struggling with unruly kids or elderly parents. Maybe things are tough with your marriage or your friendships. Maybe your wife is almost always pooping her pants at Safeway when you <laughs> want to talk about wrestling with a drifter. <laughs> BetterHelp is here to help you work through life's challenges so you can feel heard, understood, and less alone. I mean, I have a personal endorsement for you. And it sounds a little something like this. <laughs> who needs who needs a licensed mental health professional when you have a slime bucket? Whoa! <laughs> that was nuts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're thinking of starting therapy, give better help a try. <laughs> I should probably look. I know plenty of people who. I've been in Australia. Uh, Emily's been diagnosing people's mental illness, uh, you know, <laughs> just left and right. I've been hanging out with Andrew Wolf for four days. And he, at one point, uh, we were having a kebab, and he was like, Yeah, it's just like the thoughts in my head get going crazy, and I can't stop up the jibba jabber. I don't know what that's about. And Emily said, You're unwell. And he went, I am. And then he told us about. Uh, he told us about how his son, he has two kids, the five-year-old, the eight-year-old, the eight-year-old, he's singing his songs, he does his dances. The five-year-old's fat, he slaps his belly. <sighs> so if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's totally online, so it's convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Getting started is easy. Just fill out a quick questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. If you ever need to swap therapists, you can change at any time, no additional charge, no questions asked. So hey... <laughs> You can do this all over the phone, and if you if you're just if you're trying to get a laugh out of them, you can be like, "Yeah," and that's when the suicidal ideations come in. <laughs> There's gonna be one question asked if you ever sign up for better help, and it's, uh, "Sir, are you playing with slime right now?" <laughs> no. <laughs> Why would you say that? <laughs> I had I had chicken noodle spaghetti for lunch. That's all. <laughs> Uh, let therapy let let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com/chubby today to get ten percent off your first month. That's BetterHelp H-E-L-P dot com slash chubby. BetterHelp dot com slash chubby. Uh, how much longer are you there, guys? Two more weeks. Crazy. I leave two weeks from now, and I gotta go to like, I I don't got to. I gotta say, hold on. You guys hear that? Yes. yes. What are you doing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> That's what the egg sounded like. <laughs> no, the egg was stealth. I utilized the egg uh, while people were very close by, and no one knew what I was up to. Yeah, you said our door was open. It was, yeah. Weird bonds. You guys were so self-involved in your phones and your little internal worlds that I was able to sneak one past, <laughs> jack off. What would you have done well, if one of us not stood be, up to not talk be gross. to you? <laughs> I think I even checked in and I was like, "What time are we leaving?" Uh, egg. egg. <laughs> oh uh. no, I know when you did it. Yeah, you know. Yes. Everybody knows now. <laughs> so what's up with like, you guys Lund, sounds like you're not slime. sleeping it's not no, good because it weeps i'm sleeping a lot becker's yeah. got covid and refuses to ask for help i've i've been getting help i oh. just got like two big grocery runs and haven't needed much else plus these pills they put me on rule this pax lovid is you're, kicking ass you're pax loving it yeah. yeah look at him he's fucking gorked yeah. He's the prime minister of Highton. I've been sleeping like 16 hours a day. Jesus. So I Good, think, I suppose. Yeah, I think it's helping. I'm out here it's... flying the flag, the Chubby Bee Nation worldwide now, and you guys are just snooze fest USA. Dude, yeah. I got got at customs. Yeah, well, I don't think you should blame it on the person you blamed it on. I think I should blame it on the guy who was coughing directly on me for 40 minutes. I think that you should blame it on digging cigarette butts out of ashtrays because you were so eager to have another. This have, motherfucker smashed so many cigs back to back. Yes, that's that's supposed to protect you. 
He bought. He, did I tell you that he bought a carton of Marlboro Reds in the airport before we left in Tokyo because he was so desperate to have one cigarette? <laughs> yes. No, I didn't did know. You that. crush all those Reds? Did you eat no. all those Cowboy Killers? No, I still no. have a bunch of them. Are you handing them out to the uh, to the to the nurses when they come to check your vitals? <laughs> no, nope, I've just like been you're, smoking like you're back them from slowly. a foxhole. They're not great. None of those Japanese cigarettes were fantastic. They were all just a little subpar. Yeah, a little bit different. What's with yeah, the reds? Are, squirrely. Are the reds stale or something or what? No, they're just like the same as the camels where like the filter's just not the same and they get like kind of hot. Huh. They don't. Yeah, they... I mean, the filters are made out of fucking, you know, that was dandelions always... and butterfly wings. That was always very gross to me was when we were able to go up to the Airbnb after walking around in 97 degrees, 98% humidity. And you guys would always be like, well, yeah, we could go up into the AC right now, but instead we're going to huff cigs and stay out here where it's the worst and make it even grosser by puff and tough. A lot of the time we were just watching Becker smoke too. Me and Bonzo weren't even engaged. <laughs> just like, let's keep an eye on him. I don't want them to like revere him as some kind of Shinto turtle god come to life because of his exposed dome. <laughs> also, Becker did not wear a fucking hat the whole time we were there. He just had his glistening fucking bulb out on display. And I was so <laughs> nervous the whole time we were going to... I thought your head, you were going to wake up one morning and it would just look like a fruit roll up and we would peel it <laughs> off and then you would eat it. And you'd be like, oh, I make my own candy now. <laughs> No, I was pretty sure I was going to be okay because I was already bald enough that I'd already burned my head a couple of times that summer. So I'd already gotten that base layer. That summer, that magical summer that's of still happening. Color, <laughs> yeah. But I already had I, that uh, base. Yeah, I, you... I'm using I'm using hymns now. I'm using keeps or whatever. Yeah, hymns I think, is boners. I think I'm gonna have to do that. Keeps I'm using it, hair. man. Becker, you just got to write it off, brother. All right, it's time for you to grow a mustache or learn the violin. Because... <laughs> no, like Maybe really get a unibrow or like... So I don't think I should keep it. What? It bummed your mom out? Yeah, she was like, you can't do that. I was like, why? She's like, you look like my grandfather. I'm not dead yet. Just wait. Well, my mom loves it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the two... Rubber bands make it look like a little body bag. It yeah. looks like lumpy and <laughs> put it because well, we had to we had to delineate between Emily's and mine because Emily's dad is with us as well. In the bag? No, they were two separate bags. I was like, can we just put them in the same bag? And Emily was like, that's weird. Oh, is it to mix fucking body remains in one Ziploc bag? That's bizarre. We're going to dump them in the same trash can. <laughs> God, eventually. Yeah, I know. I don't know. I forgot to dump her out in Japan. I feel bad. Mm, Nothing made her laugh more than the people <laughs> from that humble island stronghold. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the one thing that gave her joy. Counting airplanes, mojitos, and Chinese from Japanese people walking by. <laughs> Nothing tickled her as much. Just after the stroke, right? Uh, yeah, or at least like maybe she she just let her guard down after the stroke. Maybe before she was just like <laughs> just stifling laughter every time she walked by. <laughs> That'd be funny, <laughs> biting her tongue <laughs> to keep from howling with laughter whenever <laughs> Asian people were present. <laughs> uh, she was a complicated woman. Ugh, it's bedtime. No show tonight for me, guys. I got a big night ahead of me and some natural wine. Did and you, get, you got some. <laughs> did you did you uh, stock up? You said you were next to a natural wine place. I don't know. Yeah, I've been drinking a bunch of natural wine here, man. Like a bottle a day. Hasn't been affecting me. I'm fine. Orange. There's some orange involved. There's some just a bunch of just fucking pet nats. It's been fun, man. Uh. I really, I could see myself living here. I might, I might expatriate and move down here for a while, guys. Mm -hmm. So get used to this kind of schedule for the pod. 
great. Also, I lost my passport. No. <laughs> yeah, so I can't come home. Okay. Uh, yeah, a lot of people can't... would be worried. You can't Not go really. to Paris. I can still get into Paris. They know me there. <laughs> <laughs> they, they know me as Bulbo the Buffon, the clown from abroad. I w am excited for Paris, but I'm not super excited for the <clears throat> uh, stress of not knowing the language without the... Like, Tokyo was fine. Like, people spoke English, and most of the menus and trains were had English on them. And Paris, you know, we were there, and it's not like that. It's more difficult to uh, navigate. Might have we'll to do fine, man. Might have to do Google Translate so that we can just uh you know, skate by conversation by conversation. Just uh quick translate. I I'll bet they hate that too though, having a little your phone say something in French cuz you're a little baby who doesn't know how to do it yourself. Yeah, they yeah. might hate our Google <laughs> Translate, but they sure do love our fucking blue jeans. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a shit. I'm going in hot. I'm going to make them flinch. I'm going to be fucking <laughs> flicking their little bow ties and pinching their nips. Out of the way, frog man. <laughs> <laughs> I am excited, though. The food is great. Yeah, right. And Oh, yeah, we can't eat while we're there. Fuck. Sorry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. Yeah, I know. What am, what am, I'm going to walk around. I'm going to walk 20 miles a day with no <laughs> fuel. Yeah, because it's it's being sponsored by Soylent. So we just have to eat Soylent for a week. Oh, that's fine. It'll take care of all my needs. Yeah, it will. Much like this guy will. As soon as we're done with the pod. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go change the key on Emmy. She can figure it out on the streets with Richo. <laughs> He's with you the whole time? Yeah, him and Jez Watts. This guy Jez Watts stepped up. And it's nuts because Jez is sober and has like four degrees in like, you know, neuroscience and like data analytics. And Richo, you know, grew up inside of a kookaburra tree being mm -hmm. tricked by the moon when it left the sky at night. Mm -hmm. So um, they're just like a perfect yin-yang situation. All my needs are met. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's awesome. No, I'm just kidding. Richo's quite capable. He keeps he keeps threatening to beat people up, which I like. <laughs> it's like is that cunt giving the side eye because I'll go and I'll make both his eyes crooked. You no, know, Richo. <laughs> he, she she lost her 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 brother died in the bus crash. She, she's not giving me the side eye. <laughs> <laughs> who somebody else was doing that See, for works. you? Who who was that? So, somebody was uh, threatening to, to fight people up? every other person. Yeah, I can't remember where you were, but somebody was like Probably little, Chris Pierce. a little too fired up everywhere you went. No, it might have been in Toronto, right? It was that same night. Oh, yeah, that big boy Jake. The it guy in like the bar a... that wouldn't leave and then insisted yeah. that he hadn't stolen that jacket. Yeah. Pretty much whenever I leave the States, people are trying to rough up roustabouts on my behalf. <laughs> I like that. No one did that in Japan, but we didn't have okay. to. Everybody got out of your way. Did you ever? Yeah, they kept pointing and saying, Godzilla! Someone... You never bumped into someone. <laughs> and then I, had did, them I bumped say... into that one guy, ran into my belly, and he bounced all the way across the subway tracks. <laughs> <laughs> but then I brought him back across by Kirbying him. So mm -hmm. it was okay. <laughs> Uh, I love this slime. It's really bringing me back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're in, you're, uh, you're in trance there. You can't. Look I might away. have slime autism. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe that's the version. <laughs> I think I found my thing. Yeah, some people like train horns. Some you guys made... like clock radios. Yeah, you made fun of train guys. Meanwhile, <laughs> you can't concentrate on account of the slime. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone mental on account of the slime. <laughs> I haven't really played with it much since I've been here. I've been busy, but now that I have some time alone. <laughs> you don't. We're right here. Oh, sorry. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, this thing runs itself at this point. So. <laughs> if I want to have a wee wiggle with my green blob, I can. <laughs> Check this out. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Learn, learn how to juggle. 
I can juggle, but not slime. Why not slime? Because I care for it too much. I don't want to <laughs> rough it up. I don't want to bruise it. And also, look at... <laughs> As you rip uh, it in half. I'm not ripping it in half, am I? So, I'm sorry. I'll focus. I got to put this away. This can't be another slime episode. <laughs> See you later. Bye, guys. Thanks for listening to Chug Behemoth. <laughs> uh, okay, focus, focus, focus. I have to focus on not shitting my pants. Uh, yeah, it's been 18 minutes. It's difficult. I can't. Now that I know that the slime's right there, I really can't bring it back to this. <laughs> I like these late night episodes. Yeah. What time is it there? What time uh, is it? Uh, 4.42. No, it's not. Oh, yeah. p.m. It's 4 p.m. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, we had a big train ride today. Richo was navigating the train, and, you know, he didn't know what it was supposed to do. So we ended up taking a bus. And on the bus, me and Emmy were trying to read, but they were playing, like, uh, some podcast. The bus driver was playing a podcast about Australian rugby. And, like, so we put in fucking uh, earplugs at one point. And then he turned it up, and Emily yeah. just went, what the heck, really loud. <laughs> yeah. Well, so that anyway, is wild, isn't it? It was an odd decision. It was an odd <laughs> choice on behalf of the bus driver. Because all the fucking seafaring grandmas who were riding back from the Pickle Festival or whatever, they didn't <laughs> want to hear about, you know, the the South Metronome Broncos versus the Tuwamba Guamba Eels. <laughs> Dude, also here, it really feels like they're spiking the football because they fucking, you know, everywhere you go, it's like we honor the sacred caretakers of this land, you know, the the Chipumba tribe or the, uh, you know, the Jumajaris. But it's like you're just gloating. You're just doing a victory lap, you know? It's like you're you're admitting that you stole the land and then you like – then they also put up these paintings of like, uh, you know – uh, elders and they just look like a like a fucking pumpkin that's been left outside until like huh. mid-november it's like they couldn't pick like a hot young uh mm. indigenous person you have to put up grandma's grandma <laughs> <laughs> sorry you can't jack it on the bus to hot ass from no a it's just like long it's one tribe. thing to be like hey, we stole the land, but then to be like, hey, we admit that we stole the land, so thank you to the, the fucking sacred stewards of this land. Oh, the slime's back. What the? Yeah, <laughs> it, it took you two minutes <laughs> Got it. to have to grab it again. Sorry. It's my only friend. Ugh. <laughs> oh. <sighs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna dump everywhere. Do it. That'd be good. I don't you want know what you to. should do. You should do it on top of Jake's head. We can <laughs> oh, do a no. little slip and slide. <laughs> London, do you do any shows since you've been back? Have you been no. riffing on Japan? No. no, I haven't done anything. <laughs> I've been sleeping and I worked once. <laughs> uh, Damn. Yeah, I have not. It's been nice. I have done a little bits of promoting the special. Thank God that's almost over. It's, you know, I, I don't know. You're the same way. Like, you want to worry about the next show, not, like, dwell on this one fucking show and be like, I don't know. I, I hate when I'm on Twitter and I see somebody giving you a fucking update at three times a day about their upcoming special or movie that they made or that they're making. And, yes, I understand that that's, like, kind of how you're supposed to do it but it doesn't mean that it's not annoying that it's not like frustrating to be like hey here's another post reminding you about my stupid thing i'm over it so but soups up comes out august 14th is that right soups up comes out uh february of next year and i have to i have to post every day about it yeah um, it has to be my favorite soup. I have to get cute with it. So it's uh, my favorite soup. Soup of the day. I have to do a soup of the day for the next six months. <laughs> Every fucking day. There's like, there's like five soups. And I somehow have to do something with that. For the I bet we can name more than five quarter. soups right now. 
Ready? No, there's only five. There's chowder, there's a uh, seafood one, and then there's uh, there's spaghetti, uh, chicken noodle spaghetti. And that's it. <laughs> what? <laughs> those are the, three. And those are the One soups. of them was real. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying. There are, there are that there's the seafood one, and then there's chicken noodle spaghetti. <laughs> Man, your parents did that's not know it. how to cook, huh? <laughs> oh, no. Not, not at all. Uh, also man i'll say this do you really do you think those those are the only soups that i know i know soups <laughs> i don't know dude it's late there you're delirious becker's cackling like a demon i mean his eyes are barely open his head's never been more exposed his head looks full of phlegm yeah i wish a phrenologist would come and measure your dome right now becker <laughs> see how phlegmy it is it's mostly phlegm it really is. The uh, I'll say this about Australia: the hooters are flopping, even in oh. the winter. Oh yeah, the dumps have been dumped. Mm-hmm. They are is, out and about. Is Emily catching you? Is she noticing this as well? Is she into that? Oh, she'll be like, "Whoa, check out those! Nice. Whoa, those are heavy. Like, chill out." I mean, wait till I get back to the slime. <laughs> no, no. no. Oh, sorry. You would see uh, twice as many pairs if you weren't head down in the slime <laughs> on the bus. I we we had we had a meal at the top of the Sydney Tower uh, the other day. Eighty-eight stories in the air on a revolving restaurant. Whoa! And um, when we got up there, there was a bunch of tables near the window, and then you get a sit. And it rotates, and you're up there to buffet. You're up there for 90 minutes. And we were like, oh, can we sit by the window? And they were like, well, it's $15 more, which means mm-hmm. 10 bucks each because it's like two-thirds here. I was like, get over there. So every table is right by the window. Everyone, every, everyone's sitting right by the window looking out. Wow, it's the harbor. Wow, it's the opera house. Uh, but then... I went to uh, get some crab legs, and there was one table that was not by the window that was occupied, and it was a sleeveless shirt man <laughs> and his three very fat family members. There were three dollops and a, a man named Burlap, <laughs> and you could tell that he was like, you could tell he was just like, I already paid 80 bucks to get up here for each of us. That's 360 bucks. We don't need to sit by the fucking window. We can see it from here. You look, it's fine. Mm-hmm. You can see it right there. It was him just standing his ground. And I really, I was just like, man, I know what you're doing right now. And God bless you. Because you're going to be mm-hmm. hearing about this for the whole rest of the fucking trip. <laughs> these, these fucking, these hens aren't going to quit clucking about how Duddy wouldn't spring for the table side view. You know, it's like <laughs> he was just put his foot down and he had a whole, he, there was, there was crab up there. There was lobster. There was, uh, you know, everything you wanted. And he just had a big pile of French fries with hot dogs. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> this guy, this, this is the bravest man in all of Australia <laughs> right now. <laughs> Wait, did you say you couldn't, you couldn't uh, sit by the window or did you? No, we did. We upgraded. We paid the extra 10 bucks each to go sit by the window. But this guy was like, I can tell he was just like, fuck that. We're fine right here. Yeah. We're not, you don't need to be by the window to eat your gloop. All right. Eat your fucking <laughs> chicken noodle spaghetti, you bitch. <laughs> Were they American? I have no idea. He was sleeveless, so I assume he was American. But he's just a real bulbasaur of a guy, just <laughs> firmly planted. You want to pay for it? You fucking work in the Aircon factory. All right. Could you see? pretty good from where he was do you think or no he they, i don't know they were missing i don't out. know i didn't i didn't i didn't fucking stand my ground i i moved when my wife was like let's do it and i was like you got it baby i work hard so you can play hard your hands like your hands look like that so my hands can look like this <laughs> and then they were all covered in slime your hands are covered in blood yeah so that your hands can be covered in slime. Oh, dude. I had, like, the best piece of cheese ever. All right. That was exciting. There's this oh. guy down here named Cole Wood, and I've been following his cheese-making exploits for years. 
I told Emily, she's like, what do you want to do when we get down there? Do you want to hold a koala in Sydney? Do you want to go to the opera house? I was like, I got to get some of this guy's cheese. And she was like, <laughs> who am I fucking married to? It's been 12 years. I still can't figure you out. <laughs> so I hunted him down at this farmer's market. And it was like the one time, like I set my alarm for eight. I was like, baby, we got to get out of here. And she was like, what? So I fucking drag her out of bed. We go to the farmer's market, wait <laughs> in line for 20 cheese, minutes to get this guy's cheese. The cheese just woke up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, ju they just awakened the new cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get down there before it gets cranky. So, yeah, I, I so we order the cheese and he it's uh it's like roasted like sheep's milk cheese that he does over coals and then he makes a sandwich with it over like wood coals he harvests from the wood by his, the woods by his house his name's and, cole uh, wood and he's his whole thing is wood and coals that's right dude yeah so that's not his name his real name is shiby mcgillico <laughs> no his real name is colin because i found out because i stood by him while he made our sandwiches and was like so that's the cheese huh <laughs> i uh Big fan, been following you for years. I was one of your first thousand followers, and now look at you. And he's like, "What?" And I was like, "Yeah, is that right. is that the one you make with the Morshead Deli meat or uh, the Morshead Dairy?" And he was like, "Yeah, it is. Why do you know that?" And I was like, "Oh, just big fan." <laughs> Jesus, kind of like slime, and I'm a big slime guy. <laughs> uh, another one of these American slime guys comes down here, <laughs> blows up my spot. <laughs> thinks he can talk yeah. to me about cheese because he's had a slime or two <laughs> yeah so i just bothered him for like the 12 minutes it took him to make my sandwich and then i did the thing where i got it and i was like i've been waiting for this for years man and he like looked up like how sad is this guy's life that this is the fucking peak of his australia trip and i was like emmy take a picture of me eating it in front of cole <laughs> it's like totally embarrassing but i didn't care <laughs> So yeah, I, I bit into the sandwich and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I was being so sincere and Emily yeah. was like, you need to stop. But yeah, I ate it right by him. and just kept, I kept checking in and being like, dude, this was worth it. This bite superseded all expectations. He was so bored and over. <laughs> bite four was even better than bite three. He told me, he's like, you, you should get a table and sit down. Like, he tried to fucking run me out of there. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a brutal display for me. The white wad from up north. But, uh, oh, it was good, man. Gold Street Dairy. Shout out to him. I'm glad it was good. Wait, also, big old yeah. sandwich at 8.30 in the morning? Yeah, big old cheese brick sandwich at 8.30, followed up by a cup of coffee. My innards <laughs> didn't know if they were coming or going. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, oh, and then I had a smoothie, and then it was a rush to the toilet. It was just like a coin flip if I was going to get – they, they might have fucking booted me out of the country if I, if I did what I did when I got back outside. Megan had a close call. We were at Safeway. And she was like, we have to go now. <laughs> and there was a guy waiting in line at Starbucks who is a big wrestling fan. And I wanted to tell him about how we saw Okada and Osprey live. But I knew that we would talk for more than like 10 seconds. And we did, I didn't have, didn't have the time. I didn't want uh, to be the reason that Megan didn't make it home in time. So I had to just give him a wave and keep moving. That would have been bad for the business. She made it. She she made it. <laughs> it would have been Barely. bad for uh, for mutiny if because that would have been all over the city. That would have been like big yeah. news in Trinidad. That would have been the bus disaster of Trinidad that day. <laughs> Dude, just... there's a there's a bus disaster in those bathrooms like every other day. Becker, was that yeah. the case when you worked there? It was. Pe people it was just. Insane. People don't know how their bodies work and then figure it out at mutiny where they're like, oh, God, I forgot. I have I have to shit <laughs> like, yeah, it's in, it's truly insane how people shit in public at every place I've ever worked. Yeah, well, there's like a hard line of people who just sometimes like when I worked at Safeway in high school, people would go in there and like. I don't know how they do it, but they would like turd into their hand and then throw it at the ceiling. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, and then it's when you have to, when you have to like 
fucking mop the ceiling and then that water's <laughs> dripping down on you you're just getting shit water in your hair you're right or below your bald it. head <laughs> yeah you try and do it from an angle and it still doesn't work like it sucked <laughs> The fucking yeah. I don't know what they do. It's like it's like they just go fucking primeval in there, and they're just hucking their turds all over the wall. I remember one guy drew a swastika in turd one time. Oh, uh, God. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Brad Gabrielski, because he was like, <laughs> later that day when we were, I was smoking cigarettes out front, he was like, were you in the bathroom today? And I was like, yeah. He was like, yeah, that's pretty good, right? And I was like, <laughs> did you do the swastika? And he's like, kept moving. Uh, I, wa- I-, I-, I think that maybe at least some of the explanation is that a lot of people don't want to have to shit in public so they hold it off <laughs> you're, sh- you're shitting in private the way you're supposed to <laughs> but so they just start like <laughs> <laughs> they're just going they're trying to go from like store to store and not have it be an issue and it's like that's not how it works you're not in control. You have to fucking shit and you don't wait until it's the same thing with puking. People will drink and just like all of a sudden puke at the bar. And it's like you felt bad and you knew that you had to puke. But you're like, well, maybe I won't. And I'll take this other this like next shot and I it won't make me puke. Of course, it, it does. And then they act like surprise. And it's like, come on, man, you're an adult. You, you If you don't feel good, you go to the bathroom, you sort it out. Yeah, I hate when people are immature. <laughs> Couldn't get a good one there. <laughs> there's been a there's been a lot of good ones. <laughs> It'd be funny if like you're like a fucking ER doctor and you're like Mrs. Montgomery, I'm sorry, but we lost him. <laughs> but here to lessen the blow. <laughs> Sam Talent on slime. <laughs> I just get hired. <laughs> You're like Patch Adams. Yeah. You help soften. Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> help soften the blow. Nothing softer than slime. Remember that. Put that on my tombstone. <laughs> oh, someone's here. What's that? It's my wife. The, the slime Hold on, I gotta let her in. going off. Is that the only? Is that the, there's another one? I don't know. We have the same question. Mm-hmm. Maybe he'll send it to me. I think that might be the only one. Oh, I'm back, the, mate. Is that the only ad read? That's all we have this week. Yeah. Nice. All right. Okay. Well, good job. I'll get this posted either at lunch. Well, no, no. Or we have to. Time. We have to wrap it up. Which oh, okay. is. It's right. Just go in the middle. There was so, a good. There was a good button of the slime, but well, speaking of slime buttons, you can come ring my slime button all over Australia for the rest of the month. Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth, Melbourne, Gold Coast, Cairns, Innisfil. I'll be everywhere. They got a microphone. And then when I come back to the States, you can see me at Laugh Boston in September, as well as the Mothership Comedy Club in Austin, Texas. I will be the first comic to perform at the Fat Man who brings the slime tub on stage. <laughs> so come on down, see the new Slime Hour. Um, <laughs> you know, Rogan's been talking about how he likes to bathe in ice cold Arctic waters. I'm going to see if he'll fill up a whole tub with slime mm-hmm. and let me get in there and wallow around <laughs> my little mushroom man. Also, join the Patreon. We're having a lot of fun over there. We're posting videos bi weekly. Uh, we've got the whole run that we did across the Northeast and then some Japanese stuff will be on there as well. Lund soups out. It's going to be available soon. Soups on, on YouTube, August 10th. Uh, I think it'll be 8 PM Eastern. Uh, so there is a, uh, uh, a page that you can, a link that you can click on, on my Instagram and, uh, you can click, uh, notify me. And you'll get an email. You'll get an alert when the special goes live. If you can, uh, you can like the uh, link. You can comment. So please, uh, let's get uh, some some interaction interaction over there and uh, drum up some we're gonna, some anticipatory we're gonna, excitement. 
We're going to play a clip real quick from the special. Here's a, here's a little <laughs> preview clip from Nathan Lund Presents Soup Song. Ooh, you suck. Get off stage. You suck, oh, Lund. I'm going to shit my pants. What the hell? <laughs> Ah, oh, fuck. This sucks. Damn it. I just dumped my load in my own pants. <laughs> fuck. It's my special. God damn it. So yeah, go, go watch that. Join the Patreon. We love you. We need you. And now, a little wisdom from the slime. <laughs> Hoping to get one good one to end on. Yeah, get a good there one. There we go. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> Talked over it. I I biffed it. <laughs> this is my I, art, Lund. Respect it. I stepped on the slime. Oh, do do it with your feet. That could be a whole other thing. That's for the Patreon. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Shelby Behemoth. See me stomp slime. Goodbye. <laughs>